Should you buy a Mac right now? Seems like a pretty simple question, and it was until Apple decided to go and just upset everything of their own line by announcing their intent to use their own processors in computers, starting with a still unannounced set of them at the end of the year. And then they're planning on phasing a transition over to full Apple Silica over the next two years. And since that announcement, the most frequent question I've gotten over the past few weeks has been, Gary, should I buy a Mac now or should I wait until after the ARM Macs come out? I get that question all of the time. So if the best and brightest is still around the corner, should we put down our hard earned money and buy a current Mac computer? Well, should we? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Okay, the plan for today is, I'm gonna split the difference. We have absolutely no idea which of the computers will be the first to launch. Will there be a MacBook Pro 16, an iMac Pro, a MacBook 12 inch resurgence? Currently, nobody has any idea except for Apple. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna give you my five reasons why I would buy a Mac now and my three reasons why I would wait until the new ARM models come out. My years of YouTube intuition tells me that this is a plan to make sure everybody can be good and mad at me. Hooray! Right off the bat, let's start off with why you should go out and buy one of these existing Macintoshes. The number one reason basically is what I alluded to in the opening. We have no idea which computers will come out and when they will come out. We don't have a roadmap for how the computers are gonna play out. So if you need something with the power of a MacBook Pro 16 right now, you might get stuck waiting for a very long time for an ARM-based MacBook Pro 16 or whatever the future equivalent is. So what I'm about to say is more of an overall philosophy and it's it's less about this specific topic, but if you ask me if you should wait for a piece of gear to come out, I very rarely recommend waiting because there's always something new in the horizon. If you have a need right now, buy the tech you need to get your job or task done right now. Like I said, there's always something new and there's always something shiny on the horizon. If you're always waiting for the next big thing, you will literally never get anything done. You'll never, you'll, there's always something new coming out. For example, if you need a power machine and the first ARM Mac on deck is a lightweight, power efficient MacBook Air, kind of sucks that you waited for that, right? So yeah, the first reason is if you have a project that a current Mac fills, go for it now, don't wait. What's on the market now can easily accomplish any task that you might have. So the second reason why you should buy one of the current Macs. Now, as much as we, and when I say we, I mean tech enthusiasts, myself, we like to rag on Intel processors anymore. However, they are known quantities. You can very easily go out and compare the power you could get from any of the existing Mac computers against each other, or even if you're dabbling like me in both Windows and Apple right now, you can compare different CPUs against each other pretty easily. And that makes your buying decision a whole lot simpler because it's a known quantity versus a known quantity. You know how whatever it is in the computer is going to react. If you wanna know what you are buying and how it will work, buy a computer with an Intel chipset. You might not exactly love right, how it works right now, like I'm not a huge fan of Intel chips, but at least there will be no guessing or potentially long-term problems that we haven't even seen yet. Intel is a known quantity and known quantities introduce less risk in purchasing decisions. And as somebody that doesn't like to get burned on purchases, less risk is way more preferable for me. I don't like taking risk on things that I need to get work done. Number three is sort of like number two. There will absolutely be growing pains in the transition between Intel and ARM base Max. It's going to happen. That's if, and that if is a huge if, everything in the world goes perfectly smoothly between now and 2022, which if 2020 is any kind of indicator, I'm not sure how stable things will be over the next couple of years. A disruption at any level of production from manufacturing plants, the distribution of stuff, to there's a hundred little businesses that lead up to you actually having a computer in your hand. Like those could cause a big headache in this transition. I mean, it just will. If you're like me and just love this gear for being awesome, then that's cool. Go ahead and spend some money on a question mark of a system. But if you are more prudent and cautious, you might wanna buy that Intel Mac now because who knows what the next couple of years of transition are gonna look like and what problems each step of the way could introduce. Fourthly, on the reason to buy the current stock of Macs, you can buy them at great prices refurbished from the Apple website. I actually, my main computer is a MacBook Pro 16 and I got it for like 500 bucks off because it's refurbished. 
Now, I already have a whole video on the process and what you get if you buy a refurbished machine. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but you save tons of money and it gets treated like it's brand new by Apple. You get the same warranty, the same accessories, the same everything, literally. The only difference between a refurbished MacBook and a brand new MacBook, besides all of the money you save, is it says refurbished in one spot on the box. Like that's it. That's it, that's between you and 500 bucks. Honestly, of all of the reasons on this list, this one is the biggest for me. I love being able to save a ton of money and have zero risk at the same time. Especially, like I use these computers for all of my video production. Like this is a dollars and cents business, so saving money helps because I gotta invest in other places to make content for everybody. And the fifth and final reason to buy an Intel Mac now instead of waiting, it will be supported for a very long time. Heck, Big Sur, the new Mac OS operating system, works on Apple devices that are pretty darn old. Apple really has a great track record for supporting their older devices. And much like we've seen over the previous reasons, you can get power, affordability, reliability, and known quantities as far as processors and internal goes, and you get support even after the quote unquote transition is complete, hopefully in a couple of years. I see Apple get beaten up all of the time for their Apple tax, which yes, Apple computers generally cost more per spec than a Windows machine. They end up having a longer lifetime. They hold their value very, very well. So if you do hold on to one for a while, selling it at the end of its life will still get you some of your money back. Okay, so those are some pretty compelling reasons to buy a Mac now because Macs now are still fantastic and valuable devices. That's not to say the new Apple Silica isn't exciting because I'm very, very excited for it. If you know me, I absolutely love the power and thermal performance on my iPad Pro. And the thought of that coming to an actual computer, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So here are my three reasons why maybe you should wait for the Apple chips. So the three reasons I'm about to say are really built on one key assumption, that you already have a Mac that works for you. If you need to upgrade or you have a broken Mac or you, or you need it, your first computer or you need a computer, then don't worry about these, don't wait, just buy something now. So these three, you already have something that works. First up, they could have a level of power, efficiency, and thermals that we have not yet seen in an Apple product. I'm certainly not the first person to notice this, but the biggest indication of what might be in the future, in my opinion, is the most recent MacBook Air. The new MacBook Air makes zero sense from a thermal perspective as an Intel-based computer. They've put, Apple has put a pretty beefy chipset, which regardless of any of the options, they all have quite powerful processors inside of them with almost no cooling capabilities. And as somebody that's starting to really dabble in laptops, cooling capabilities is the most important factor in a laptop. You could have up to a quad core i7 trying to passively cool itself. Sure, there's a fan, but it's not actually connected to anything. So even my i5 has thermal problems and it can barely get started out of the gate without having thermal issues. But if you look at the most recent refresh of the iPad Pro, which does have an Apple chip in it, it does not have a fan, it's crazy small, and it has power that, frankly, my MacBook Air does not. Yes, some of that power is due to the hyper optimization that Apple and its developers have done around the specific apps that you can do on iOS. Maybe it won't be as powerful in a generalized nature of a more full computer experience, but we don't know. It could be that fast. My iPad also does very heavy graphics and processor specific tasks like video editing and rendering at lightning speed and it doesn't like melt on me when I use it. So if you can take the iPad and the MacBook Air and smush the products together, you have a chassis that already exists, which doesn't make sense for its current engineering paradigm and a set of internals that it might just make a whole lot of sense for. I, I frankly find the thought of a MacBook Air running with the guts of an iPad Pro insanely exciting and I, if they release one, I'll buy it pretty quickly. The second reason to wait for the new ARM-based devices is the interoperability. All of us in the Apple ecosystem, we love to talk nonstop about how the ecosystem works so well together. I mean, I say it in it at least once. I think I'm obligated to say it at least once in each Apple video I make. I cannot wait to see how well it all works together when it's all based on the same underlying hardware. In my day job, I work as a project manager for a software company and we constantly, 
constantly have to battle with how to get our software to run on very different hardware configurations. Obviously, this is not an insurmountable task. I mean, we do it every day. But the more you can plan on having the same set of assumptions on every device, or at least the same family of assumptions, it gives you so much control over what you can do and what you can't do. And with how outstandingly good Apple already does between phone, watch, computer, tablet, having control over everything is so exciting and I honestly can't wait to see it. The third reason to wait is, I mean, what's really new and what's worth waiting for on the Intel side? Yes, we already talked about the current Intel Macs and how great they are. And I still, I mean, I have them. I still think they are a great investment especially if found refurbished. But if you were looking for a new computer and want to buy the latest and greatest brand new Mac, while yes, Apple has already said they will continue to push out updates to the Intel Mac side of the house in the future, what can they give you that they haven't already done? Let's say tomorrow, for the sake of argument, let's say tomorrow a new iMac comes out. I'm saying iMac because it's, it's getting pretty long in the tooth as far as Apple goes. It'll probably be a bump from the previous version with 10th gen Intel chips, probably some faster RAM, and it will be a totally functional device, and honestly, I'll still probably buy one. But it won't be revolutionary from the previous generations of iMacs, and much like the current iPad Pro versus the previous year's model, Getting a refurbished one, again, will just save you a ton of money up front, and you're not gonna miss out on really any functionality, and you're not gonna miss out on all that much performance. I do feel bad, because it seems like Apple is kind of stuck right now with their product lines. While we all want the new ARM processors to get here tomorrow, it adds an asterisk to all of their future Intel releases. Yes, they will be a great computer, but it's not the direction Apple is going in the future, so get it as a stopgap, I guess. I will, as a gearhead and somebody that makes content on all this stuff, I will continue to buy all of the new devices because I'm a huge computer enthusiast. But take these thoughts of mine into account and hopefully this answered all of your questions that you have for me about what you should do. And if you like this video and wanna see what I think about the newest iPad operating system, iPad OS 14, click here, I've got a whole video about it. Thankfully, if you were thinking about it, I made the video just for you. Click right here, click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.